Hi everyone, my name is Professor Brianna Blazinski. My friends call me Professor B for short. This may be your first time taking anatomy. You may have taken anatomy a few years ago or even a few terms ago. This could all just be review. In this video series, we will be looking at the anatomy of the cardiovascular and respiratory systems using images of real human cadaveric tissue. How many of you remember going to the doctor and having to fall victim to the cold, cold touch of the stethoscope? Though this may not be the most comfortable situation to be in, we know that it's better than how it used to be. In the old days, before stethoscopes were invented, doctors would literally put their ears to the patient's chest. I don't know about you, but I would definitely prefer the cold touch of the stethoscope. But why do clinicians use the stethoscope? What's the point? The clinician will be listening to the heart and attempting to hear any abnormalities. The heart and the system it's a part of is our focal point for this video. The cardiovascular system has several key components. The heart, blood vessels, and of course, the blood. In this lecture series, we will be focusing more on the gross anatomy of the heart and some important blood vessels. But it is important to set up a foundation before we dive in. When we think about the function of the cardiovascular system, one of the main things we think of is its ability to transport oxygen and nutrients to our tissues and remove carbon dioxide and waste. This is true, but these are not the only things that the cardiovascular system will transport. The cardiovascular system is responsible for transporting hormones, ions, metabolic wastes, and even leukocytes, which we know is just a fancy word for white blood cell. This means that the cardiovascular system is very integrated in the normal functioning of several other systems in the body, like the endocrine system, the urinary system, and the immune system. Without the cardiovascular system, we would not be able to manage homeostasis, and it would likely cause cellular injury or even cell death. So party people, what do you think is the most important component of this system? The heart. The heart is the muscular tissue that ties everything together. What kind of muscle tissue can be found in the heart? Cardiac muscle is correct. The heart is a muscle pump that will push the blood throughout the entire body. If the heart stops, the tissues would not get oxygen, waste will accumulate, and could become necrotic. Do you recall if this muscle tissue is voluntary or involuntary? Involuntary is correct. How do we know this? Because you don't have to make the conscious decision to tell your heart to beat. So now let's switch gears and get to know more about where our heart is located in the body. The heart is located in the thoracic cavity directly posterior to the sternum. So if we start by dissecting away the ribs and sternum, we will begin to expose connective tissue structures that surround the heart. This is called the pericardium. The pericardium surrounds the heart completely and it's composed of various components. The most superficial component of the pericardium is referred to as the fibrous pericardium. If we then take our scalpel and make a cut into the pericardial sac, we would find the first part of the serous pericardium directly deep to our fibrous pericardium. This first layer is referred to as the parietal layer of the serous pericardium. Together, the fibrous pericardium and the parietal layer of the serous pericardium form the pericardial sac. The next layer is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium, which is also known as the epicardium. This layer is located on the surface of the heart. Between the parietal and visceral layers of the serous pericardium, there's a potential space referred to as the pericardial cavity, and this cavity is filled with serous fluid. This acts as a lubricant which reduces friction between the pericardial layers as the heart continues to beat. This potential space is so important clinically because it can become inflamed or even fill with blood, which could cause very serious detrimental effects to the heart overall and maybe even death in our patient. Now, once we completely remove the pericardium, we will see the heart sitting in the pericardial cavity so that the base is located superiorly and the apex points inferiorly and laterally towards the left side of the body. The apex reaches towards the fifth intercostal space and oftentimes this is where we would put the stethoscope in order to listen for heart sounds like mitral valve abnormalities. When we look toward the base of the heart, we see the major arteries and veins of the systemic and pulmonary circuits. Remember, in this video we talked about the functions of the cardiovascular system, the components of the cardiovascular system, the location of the heart in the thorax, and the layers of the pericardium.
Thanks for watching. For more educational videos, subscribe to the West Coast University channel below.